In the fall of 2016, I, Jacob Sternberg, took a course titled Africa City, a course at New York University that explored and centered around the question of how does the city and its heritage produce or formalize a distinct Africa? We have learned and discussed the idea that an African city must not necessarily be geographically placed in the continent of Africa, but rather an African city is defined by its form, landscape, culture, urban design, and people. So what stops an African city from forming in Israel? That question is something I would like to uncover in this project. The scenes playing now are from a National Geographic documentary showcasing the current Jewish population in Ethiopia. I conducted research, gathered picture, film, and interviewed various individuals surrounding the topic of the Ethiopian Jewish people, formerly known as Beta Israel. Here is a look at the Ethiopian Jewish people and city. It's in 1420 when Emperor Yashak declared that any non-Christians were considered Falasis or outsiders, which gave the nickname to the Jewish people as Falashas within Ethiopia. It's in 1850 when Protestant missionaries came to Ethiopia, started converting Jews to Christians, which is the start of this whole movement of this Jewish conversion outside of Judaism. It's in 1940 when world Jewry started knowing and learning about this Jewish community within Ethiopia. They started coming to Ethiopia, teaching about, about Judaism elsewhere, and giving and, and growing this Jewish community within Ethiopia. It's in 1948 that the state of Israel, uh, the Jewish state, came alive, uh, which kind of started this whole dream of Ethiopians one day living in their homeland of Israel. Um, I'd like to point out the 1974 Ethiopian Revolution totally shook up the dynamic for people in Ethiopia, which really started paving this road of Jews leaving Ethiopia and going to their homeland of Israel. And then that takes us kind of to 1983-1984 of Operation Moses, the start of the mass immigration of Jews from Ethiopia to Israel. Come along. I would like to clarify, these are a legitimate thousands of Jews living in the Gondar region of Ethiopia, whom observe kosher, keep strict marital purity laws, and pray. As part of the Jewish tradition, they dream about one day being in Jerusalem. Finally, this was a possibility. After the Great Famine in Ethiopia, which led to thousands of deaths and overall chaos, as well as the rise of Marxism, thousands of the Beta Israel community fled many of them on foot, to the Sudanese refugee camps. In exchange for aid from the CIA and Israel, the Sudanese government turned a blind eye to the 7,000 Ethiopian Jews that were airlifted from Khartoum to Israel in what is called Operation Moses. The name was dubbed after the story of Moses, who led the Jewish exodus from Egyptian slavery. Here's a clip of an Israeli woman named Orly, reflecting on her experience during Operation Moses 30 years later. זאת אני, אורלי מלסה. נולדתי באתיופיה. כשהייתי בת שנה, המשפחה שלי ואני עשינו את המסע לארץ ישראל, שהתחיל במסע לסודן. כשהיינו בסודן כשלוש שנים במחנה פליטים. לישראל הגעתי בספטמבר 1983. אני בת 38 היום, מתגוררת בתל אביב, במאית ומפיקת סרטים עצמאית. A few years later, Israel saw one last opportunity to save the remaining Beta Israel community from uncertainty in Ethiopia. Israel supplied the Ethiopian government that was fighting the rebel groups with aid in exchange to complete this mission. In May of 1991, within a span of 36 hours, the mission was completed. 14,325 Ethiopian Jews were airlifted from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to Israel. A world record was set for the most people ever on a flight. 1,088 people went aboard one aircraft. Two babies were born while in air. The challenge now is how to absorb 15,000 new citizens who do not speak the native language nor are familiar with a modern Israeli society. Here is a clip released by the Jewish Agency about the absorption process for Ethiopian Jews. On their arrival, they are provided with some of the advantages of civilization, such as a dish rack and cutlery. Ethiopian Jews who have already been in Israel for several years work as advisors and translators to the new arrivals. At the end of the first day in Israel, the children are tucked into unfamiliar beds, wondering what the morning will bring. Things that we take for granted seem to them to be a miracle. A door lock, 
a knife and fork, and the modern kitchen are unfamiliar to those coming from the more cut-off villages. It's hard for the Israelis to understand that the first demonstration of how a gas ring works can appear miraculous. So I told you about the Ethiopian Jews' history, but what do I, as an NYU student, have to do with the Beta Israel community? Let me tell you a story. On November 17th, an NYU club launched a film titled Mekonin, the story of an African Jew. The film was about the story of an Ethiopian Israeli named Mekonin, who went back to Gondar to discover his roots. Following the film was a concert by Cafe Shachor Chazak, an incredibly popular Israeli hip-hop group. Over 500 students got to enjoy a taste of the music at the NYU School of Law. At the end of 2015, the Ethiopian population in Israel was 141,000, approximately 85,000 born in Ethiopia and 55,000 born in Israel, who had a father born in Ethiopia. Like any other people in Israel today, you can find an Ethiopian Jew within any part of the religious spectrum. The younger Ethiopians are becoming more and more intertwined with Israeli culture, while those that were born in Ethiopia hold on to many of their cultural aspects, like respect for parents and elders, intensive family relations, wedding, Ethiopian dance, song, food, and language. One will also find immense pride among Ethiopian-born Jews, often citing Ethiopia as the African country that was never colonized. One also will find Ethiopian Jews teaching their children in Harik and giving them an Ethiopian name. While integrating into Israeli society is an overall positive experience compared to their situation in Ethiopia, it came at a price, joining the bottom of the socioeconomic hierarchy. In 2015, almost synonymous with the Black Lives Matter protests in the U.S., Ethiopian Jews went to the streets of Tel Aviv to protest the racial inequality and police brutality that exists among the Ethiopian Jewish community. Many Ethiopians expressed the fact that they aren't represented in television and in pop culture. But things are changing. In the past couple of years, Ethiopians have for the first time served in parliament as judges and pop culture icons. The holiday of Sigdi is a holiday specific and unique to the Beta Israel community and was adopted as a national holiday for all Israelis to celebrate. Until this day, there are still a couple of thousand of Falash Mura in Ethiopia awaiting return to Israel.